Hey there, everybody. Phantom Echo here, and welcome back to Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. So let's jump right in. Darn it. You're late again. I knew you'd be late. Who would you have done if some creeper had come on to me like before? No one's coming on to you. What? Hang on. What? And just what do you mean by that? Hey, Nokia, what's a come on? Oh, right, um, that's when? It's this kind of courtship ritual that some idiotic males do when they're after a sexy cute bot like mine. I'm not sure I quite get that, but it sounds pretty scary. Yes, it is scary, but if the guy is hot, I might be okay with it. What are you talking about? Whoa, Hugo! What, uh, what a coincidence, running into you like this. What terrific luck I have! It's like this chance encounter was destined to happen. I was just thinking I wanted to talk to you about something too. I understand what you're saying. Good. Zaxxon's solidarity has been more tepid lately. Good, good! A number of us are acting so rashly as to draw interest from other hacker teams. Good, good, good. But don't you think pitting power against power will only result in unneeded chaos? Huh? Someone needs to reunite the hackers of Caldun and restore Eden to its former state of order. But that someone is not you, Nokia. It's me. What? Hang on a second! Wait! What the what? I'm completely lost. But I can do it, can't I? Well, maybe? Ah! Now I'm totally desperate. This is the pits! I'll just go around Kowloon soliciting any and all hackers I happen to come across. Then I'll have, like, a buttload of hackers with me and we'll beat the others at their own game. Yeehaw! Follow in Akido's footsteps, folks. Follow me! Oh, this can't end well. All right. I'm off to get me some tamers. Step one, raiding the Zaxxon and Demon hideouts. The demons broke up, so they don't have anything better to do. And I bet there's some freelance tamers in the Zaxxon Forum, too. Time to roll out. Trying to recruit hackers, huh? Sounds like what the demons were doing. No way! Don't lump me in with those jerks. This is completely different. I mean, for starters, that went like that because of that. And then what else could you do but this? Jeez, get it? Not one bit. Hey, you explain. Uh, our aims are different. Huh. It's actually kind of cool. In that case, maybe I should be asking you if you'll take me as an ally later. No prob. See, since I gave you such a good explanation, it's pretty easy to understand. Okay, buddy. I like the cut of your jib. Let's say you join us. We're gathering people to form a hacker group. Making a hacker group, eh? That's a big accomplishment. But rather than assume you're just as accomplished, I'll see for myself how strong you are. Wait, what? Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Reading Knuckle! Legendary Dragon Blade! So you're more than just talk. Okay, I'll tag along. Nice to meet you, leader. Same to you. Let's get even stronger together. A tamer group? Sounds like a pretty weird team. I don't have any strong feelings either way about joining, but 
Wonder what my buddy would think. Well, I think you and your friend should both join. Where are they? Uh, probably somewhere around here. Oh, so my buddy joined your team? Then sure, I'll join too. Okay. Hello, you. Yes, you. What are you doing? I'm starting a new hacker team. I just know you're interested, right? New hacker team? Why? To become closer to Digimon and to stop evil hackers. That's why I'm forming the Rebels. Huh. Sounds interesting. Fine, I'll help you. Really? Yes! Ally count ding! Plus one! This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I think that's enough members for now. I mean, look at us. We're a proper team. Heck yeah! Operation Get Members, great success! I did it! This ought to be enough. Today marks the formation of Akino's Rebel Alliance. Okay! Now we can protect Digimon from mean old hackers! Everybody, follow me! Rebels, form up and move out! Old ragtag team. Oh, I still got bad feelings about it. Where is she going, I wonder? Eh, makes me wonder. You go! What's the matter? You look awfully surprised. Did you think I was a ghost again? No, it's... If... If she happens to face off against truly evil hackers, I want you to step in and protect her. You're concerned about her? I cannot bring myself to let her put herself in any real danger in her zeal to protect Digimon. Moreover, I don't want to see Eden claim any more victims. We'll meet again. Hey, you're late. Yeah, I knew you'd be here. By the way, is Noki okay? Yeah, she's fine. Whatever. You should learn to mind your own business. When all said and done, people with a half-baked sense of justice and a superficial sense of responsibility are the worst. If her trying to be a leader, she knows nothing about bearing responsibility. Uh, that's all my looking at it, I suppose. But never mind that for now. I want to talk to you about that pseudo guy. You remember him, right? A strange chemistry researcher who was studying re mysterious phenomena. There was something he said that's been bothering me. Actually, I retraced our steps and saw him again the other day. <laughs> Critch really isn't polite to follow someone you know. I suppose this is payback for the other day, Orata Sanata. <laughs> you caught me. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, you said something before that bothers me. I wanted to know more about your investigations, too. I think I could take a peek. My, your attitude is so splendidly cynical. <laughs> and you harbor such an interest in my work, too! I want you to tell me everything you know about Eden Syndrome, the Eaters. I will, of course, share whatever I know. It must have been fate that brought us together here. If... Before logging out from Eden, your mental data is destroyed by an eater. You lose the ability to wake back up? I see. So that's the reason behind this bizarre sickness? Indeed. Although that is still just a hypothesis. <laughs> but to think that logging into Eden could have caused an impact on the physical body in the real world. Don't you find that fascinating? <laughs> And how is the syndrome cured? That, unfortunately, I do not know. Yet. I do have something interesting on digital shifts, though. Oh, don't keep me hanging here. 
We have identified a pattern in digital wave abnormalities that trigger the digital shifts. There's always a certain amount of external interference immediately prior to a digital shift. After that, the digital wave increases in bandwidth, and the digital shift happens. Interference. Yes, which means... Someone or something is controlling these digital shifts. That's one conclusion we can reach. Well, that's also nothing more than conjecture, actually. If someone's intentionally causing digital shifts. If you're interested, why not do some more research? A study into what exactly is controlling the digital shifts. But I have to ask, why are you so interested in the Eaters and Eden Syndrome? I really want to know what the cause of this bizarre illness is. I wonder if there are any clues around there. I want to try and search the area. And for you, the ship has already set sail, no? Come on, give me a hand. Because we gotta. Okay, let's go. Huh. Huh? What's wrong? Why a sudden investigation of an Eden spot? Uh, you don't see the digital shifts coming from it? What? You detected a special network, apart from the connections to Eden? Hey, hold up. What are you talking to Bet? Oh, well. Left her out, eh? Huh? Gone. Without a trace. Whoa, 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 what the heck is going on? Where in the heck? What? Where'd I end up? Whoa, where am I? What the heck? Ah, finally got through. What happened just now? What the heck did you do? Anyway, I'm heading your way now. I want to hear everything about what happened. I see. So you have Eden Syndrome too. You're devoured by an eater. So Sitter's theory was right. And your connection jump ability, you can do that because of your current body is... What I mean is... I'm sorry, I should have never left you behind like that. Don't worry about it. You're too kind. So I guess that's that. We have yet another reason to investigate Eden Syndrome. Let's expose the truth of the story so we can get your body back too. What? What's wrong? Did something... Uh oh! Time up! Wow! Well then. Th this is... So the phenomenon we're investigating just so happens to occur right when we've opened up? That's too perfect to be mere coincidence. Jeez, this keeps catching me off my guard. Hey, you're coming too, right? You know it. Because <laughs> we got a clear target now. Okay, let's go. Never ceases to amaze me. The sight of the digital world with a real and the electronic intersect. This place looks like it always did before. I could die without an exit. So all I have to do is take out that Pokemon and change everything back to normal. 20 minutes later. There we go. Leona. Okay. That should be because I interact with the orb. This one's starting. Oh. Goes Leo, man. Very nice. Yep, it's one orb. We need one more. We're in Asakusa, but it's somewhere. Hmm. Perfect. Now we can get through there. 
past the paper lantern that was blocking our path before. Oh. That was... That was the ghost of the pale boy that we saw earlier. So the previous pattern holds. That Pokemon should be nearby, right? Huh? Hey. Hey, what are you guys doing? Um, we we thought if we'd followed you, we'd find the exit. I already told you, I don't need a whole crew of Tagalongs following after me. Whoa, what's that? Whoa! <laughs> Just as I expected. Here it comes. What? Wait. Oh! Hang on. Seriously? What is that thing doing? It really wants the data conversions. What the? Wait. Oh! Oh my god. It's evolved. So it transformed after devouring a person? Keep your guard up. There's a theory that it's stronger after transforming. Extra blow. Ow! What? You've made me pixelated! Take this! That's a big callback. Oh, you sure do pack a punch. Take this! Interesting. Take another one of these. Another legendary dragon blade. Spear crash. Just in time. Winning knuckle. Oh. Nice. Your reflection. Okay. It was really strong and sterilized after all. Huh? No! We didn't find the Pokemon! And we're back here. So taking out the eater makes everything go back to normal. Same as always. That's a relief. But still. We took down the... Okay, man, but something is still controlling the strange phenomenon, and we still don't know what. Same goes with that syndrome. We didn't get any new info. Uh -huh. then that means... You! What are you doing here? I came when I detected the digital shift. Were the two of you caught up in it, perchance? I see. Well then why didn't you say anything? That's not the sort of thing to keep mum about. And? There was something new this time around? It, yes. Well, it was powerful. So much so that the Pokemon could transform after eating someone. <laughs> that is very interesting indeed! That information fits into a new theory I am postulating. A new theory? It seems that an eater changes its form bit by bit to reflect what it incorporates into itself. By incorporating human data, this eater was able to attain a form that was close to human. 
Could it be that eaters have come to find more simple digital data unsatisfying? It could be attempting to incorporate data from humans, which are organic life forms. Human data? What the heck for? I don't know yet. Not for right now, at least. Thank you very much for the valuable information. I hey, wait! Ah, uh, yes. Things have been left unsaid. I know you're a big fan of mine. I find you rather agreeable myself. What? What a creepy thing to say. No, I... Your outlaw spirit, wanting to stay unencumbered. Your rebellious streak, your desire to defy things greater than yourself. So many possibilities are open to you, Mr. Arata. Let us meet again. Very soon, I hope. Sheesh! Couldn't get a word in edgewise. And then he just up and disappears. There really is something fishy about him. Is he really just interested in research? Okay, I've made my mind up. I'm going to look into things until I know for sure what Sato and Kamishiro are really all about. Huh? How am I going to look into them? By sneaking into Kamishiro Enterprises, of course. Wait, you're going to try and go in there by yourself? <laughs> it should be easy, right? As long as you use your connection jump and my hacking expertise. Besides, we've got connections, don't we? Oh. Oh? I need to think of a plan. I'll be in touch. Oh, Rado, what are we gonna do with you? No, I had a shiny there to collect. Ah! You're awfully late, aren't you? No, no, it, it's fine. It's not like there's been any real movement here. What? There's been movement. I knew I had it right. One good turn deserves another. Give me the details on what happened. Hmm. You should let Nokia do as she wishes. She's not as thoughtless as she looks, or seems. Her response clearly comes after a lot of careful thought. We have no right to stand in her way. I think Arata's got the right idea about sneaking into Kamashiro. Let's wait on him to form our strategy. <laughs> Things have certainly gotten a bit more exciting, haven't they? You can't really help but get a rush from it. Shh. Lower your voice. Yes, that's right. I am the administrator of the Tishpedia site. I don't want anyone else to hear what I'm about to tell you, so I'll whisper it to you for now. You've heard about Tishpedia, right? It's the free dictionary that anyone can edit. So recently, there's been someone making a lot of strange edits to the article. The editor writes everything in Kansai dialect. I tried to revise the articles, but there's some kind of block in place and I, even I, an administrator, can't remove it. Therefore, I was hoping you could find this editor and ask him to remove the block. Leave it to me. Wow, you're so reliable. Thanks for taking care of this. Incidentally, the pages that editor has written on are Takoyaki, comedy, etc. There aren't that many of them yet, thank goodness. You should probably start by looking at the edit log page. Please, take care of this. This is the Digipedia site. Doesn't seem like there's any problem on the main page. I'll go check out some of the problems on the pages then. Takoyaki is Osaka's soul food. They're small and round. They look real purdy. It's best when that octopus is... In the middle's huge. It's also a different type of takoyaki where you don't get in the broth. Y'all know about that. Comedy's at the heart of Osaka. Yeah, it's right at the core of its soul. Or maybe that's supposed to be sale. I suggest y'all try that husband and wife comic duo, Jijiman and Babaman. Y'all be sure to come and see him at least once in Osaka's little theaters. This isn't just in Kansai dialect. It's all pretty subjectively written, too. I wonder if I can connect jump to the edit log page. Yes. Here we go. Huh? What you want there, youngin'? 
Am I the alpha? Am, am I the one who made them at their edits on Digipedia? How do you find one of my articles there? Interesting, don't you think? What? You're saying there was subjective information in the articles written in Kansai dialect. And Kansai dialect is hard to understand? They are misunderstood then. Kansai dialect is the lingua franca of the whole world. It's real easy to understand, I say. Listen, I don't want to hear nothing about no articles. You understand? You're just, you're just making me angry off of... With all this here talk about my writing style. Oh god. Take your talks with marbles full. Well. Goodbye, little son of mine. Oh my god. You wanna talk about writing style? Get a fist in the face. Just one hit, one tap. Sorry. This is what you said really got to me. It ain't just an interesting article, it should be easy to read and understand. In my kind of dictionary, a most important thing is professionalism. Please, give us some thought. Shh, keep your voice down. Don't just yell out, Hey, Mr. Administrator! Seriously. But, what I wanted to say was, is that the block on the pages with Kansai dialect has been removed and I've been correcting the pages bit by bit. You really did an excellent job. You have my heartfelt thanks. Indeed. I just received an email from that fellow from Kansai just now. I'll read it to you. I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused you. That little detective opened my eyes about it all. I'd like to thank you kindly for that. Now I'm gonna start my own blog promoting Osaka. I'm feeling pretty excited about it. And as you can see, he's quite a weird guy. Ah, I see that sign caught your attention too. Wait, what? What do you mean? The Super Ultra True Puppet. It's quite the intriguing name, that's for sure. Like the name says, it's an exquisitely crafted doll made to look just like a real human being that you can buy online, or so I hear. Though calling it super and ultra true is a tad redundant. They could have gotten the point across without using both terms. It's not actually that expensive. I'm thinking of saving up my money and buying one myself. And it's made by Jerogumo Company LTD. A nice snappy name for a company. Although there's a bit of a sketchy vibe to it too. Anyway, I wonder who the model behind this doll is, too, come to think of it. Hey, a case just came in from my at the Inoden Occult Research Club. Drop by the office when you can, alright? Detective Karemi! You have to help us! You have to help us, please! My, calm down. I'm sure she'll help us. Tell me what's going on. What's wrong? Even that the business from the occult club, I think we've got another supernatural case on our hands. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, probably. I don't think this has anything to do with the occult this time. Oh, and then why all the big fuss? Well, there are apparently these dolls being sold on the internet that look just like me and my. I think those dolls are called Super Hyper Ultra Lookalikes or something like that? Oh, the dolls are saw on the poster. You must be referring to the Super Ultra True Puppets. I've heard rumors about them. Alright, tell me more. These dolls, their faces, their bodies, everything from top to bottom looks just like us. They're so accurate, it's, it's creepy. And to make matters worse, they're being sold real cheap. You think they'd go for at least a little more money on the market? Uh, that's not really the problem here. You get that, right? But still, it sucks. Makes me feel like they see me as some kind of cheap piece of junk. I mean, I find it weird too that your doll costs several thousand yen more than mine, but 
Wait, so you do care about the prices after... I said it's not important. Anyway, these dolls look like us being bought by Otaku all over the place. When I think about it, those guys are probably doing with their two of them. Which <laughs> really creeps me out. You know, this reminds me of another incident. I wonder if it's connected to that. What kind of incident? There's a really dicey looking service out there that's called the Perfect Girl Project. You used to get a living doll made in the image of your ideal girl and live the life you've always dreamed of. But the police have been hearing about how owners of these dolls are going missing. I was just discussing it with Detective Matayoshi. Super ultra true puppets and living dolls made in the images of people's dream girls? I guess they sound like they could be related, but are you sure there's really a connection? That's the tough part to prove. To make dolls that look so similar to how you two really are, it'd take having pretty specific data on your bodies. I imagine getting your hands on something like that isn't exactly easy. Actually, I have an idea how they might have managed to pull it off. There's an L LDC machine in the arcade in Akihabara that I think might be suspicious. LDC. You don't mean lustful dream chicks, do you? They're certainly not one for subtlety, if that's the case. No, no, not that. I mean, Living Doll Club. That's what LDC stands for. Right. It's a machine that scans all your body and makes a 3D printed figure of it. Our data could have somehow leaked out of that, I guess. I definitely can't deny the possibility. Then our next step is clear. We need to head straight to Akihabara and gather info on this living dog club machine. That'll be your job. As for me, I'll see if I can dig up anything else regarding the Perfect Girl Project. Hi. Living Dog Club. You there. I can tell from your body language you're frustrated and unhappy. What? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm talking about you. I know this is out of the blue, but I bet you're into beautiful women, aren't you? You're assuming a lot. This is just a random person. Hope you're nervous. I don't like the cut of your jib. I'll have you know I sell top-notch dolls of only the prettiest girls. Have you heard of them? They're called Super Ultra True Puppets. Oh, wait a minute. If you want, I can let you have one for cheap. Go ahead, check this one out for yourself. What the... Excuse me? Nokia? Granted, this one's an ugly one that was made as an experiment. It hasn't sold well. But you understand how my real dolls look now, right? Once again, how dare you insult Nokia? Well, if you're interested in having one of these for yourself now, I've got something better, but it's top secret service. Nobody can know. <laughs> and what's that? Let me ask you, how are you doing health-wise? Health-wise? I haven't really thought about it. Eh, eh, well enough, I suppose. Great to hear! Really, even if you weren't 100% perfect, you'd probably still be fine. Why is that? I bet you're bored with how your day-to-day -day life is going. Wouldn't you just love to throw it all away and spend time with the girl of your dreams? Doesn't that just sound fantastic? Um... Because with the Perfect Girl Project, I can offer you exactly that. What? With the Perfect Girl Project, you can have your ideal girl recreated and sent straight to your living room as a living, breathing human being. There's just one condition you have to abide by before you use the service. Just one condition, and you can be free from the tedium you've lived up with until now. Well, what's that condition? <laughs> I bet you're wondering what that condition is, actually. I understand. That's a fair question to ask. Tell you what, I'll let you in on the condition. Free of charge. The condition is that once your dream girl has been sent to your room, you can never leave it for the rest of your life. Simple, right? What? 
Oh, you don't have to worry about survival. The girl takes care of that for you. So, what do you think? Not a bad deal, right? Uh... That's okay, take all the time you need to think. Once you know what you want, just get in touch and I'll make it happen. <laughs> right now, I think I'll just go check out the LDC machine at the arcade. How's your investigation into the LDC machine going along? So you're just about to get started on it. Encounter a suspicious man outside the LDC machine? It's good timing, because I'm detecting a faint digital noise signature close to where you're standing. Better take a close look at that arcade machine. Bet you'll find some clues about how these Super Ultra 2 puppets are being made. As usual, this case is starting to take some weird turns. Be ready for anything in there. I can connect jump into it. Here we go. I take people's data. Make dolls from it. Lots and lots of dolls. Dolls that seal souls, then people become dolls. The dolls are lifelike. The people are death-like. Huh? Who? What are you? Any interference must be punished. Any interference must be punished! Improvise. Holy moly. Oh, and you tuck your legs in to do a shell attack. Okay. Reading Knuckle! Oh, this is attack. Stick a blade! Honest. Fan Croc. Kill Spawn. Ice Mad Poop. Oh, that was close. I want to kill him if that actually cracked. Nice, nice. There's something on the ground. Mysterious URL. Hmm. Did, did, did you just, just come out of the... Out of, out of the LDC machine? Uh-huh. You're not with the cops or something, are you? Are you? What? No, maybe. Yeah, I'm a cyber sleuth. Oh. I realized that was who I was hitting up. Must not be on top of things like I used to be. Uh, I made a good amount of money as it is. Maybe it's time to call it good enough for now. What? Oh, mother trying to come after me! There's one thing I'm still good at, it's running away! See you! Wait a minute. Ah, doesn't get away. So the perpetrators behind the case are probably the salesman you met and the Digimon working together. It's unfortunate he got away, but we'll live. As we suspected, those two probably used that LDC unit to gather up girls' data and use it to make the super ultra true puppets. Does that mean you guys checked out the LDC unit in Akiba? Probably means you have a good idea of who's behind our dolls then, right? Don't get too excited. We didn't arrest the guy, but we've gotten cornered. Don't try to pull something like this again anytime soon. And they dropped this. Well, the question remains as to what's become of the perfect girl project now. At the very least, we know each doll's look are derived from a real person. The doll's realism is then used to help sway potential candidates to join the project. But what is the Perfect Girl project even really about in the first place? I think Detective Karemi mentioned that people who are a part of it have been disappearing, right? Indeed. He actually picks up some rather useful information about what's required of anybody who does join the project. Wh what is it? Anybody who has their dream girl sent to their room can never leave it. Ever. 
I'm sure I don't need to explain why that's probably a bad deal. Oh, what's this? My, is the URL left at the scene of the crime? Might come in handy. Why don't you go to the URL and check it out? Can do. But don't worry about going too deep inside. If you don't know what you'll find in there, it's very possible we could be dealing with something extremely dark and sinister. Dark and sinister? We're talking as grim as the stuff you look at for fun in your club. Maybe more so. Whatever's on the other side, it's not going to be pretty by any means. There we go. Huh? Who are you? Uh, cyber sleuth? <laughs> Man, this place sure is getting crowded now. Look, are you the one behind the dolls? Is this your room? This is my room. Yeah, of course it is. Well then, what are you doing? What's this about it being inside Eden? Ha! <laughs> Stop joking around. This is clearly the real world. How can I be in cyberspace? For all these girls around me. They're my dream girls. My dream girls is pure pristine dolls. Is that so? Yep. It's all been made possible thanks to the perfect girl project. You really know your stuff. It's promised in exchange for these dolls, I've stayed locked up inside my room. Life with these girls is the best. I couldn't be happier. They take care of everything I need. Really, I don't see any reason ever to leave this place anyway. It's perfect here. You really don't understand. But this really is inside Eden? I <laughs> Cut it out already with that man. You sure you're not the one who's actually dreaming right now? Ah, oh, it's hopeless. Huh. Alright then. So that URL led you to one of the victims of the Perfect Girl Project. Victim? What do you mean? Remember, to join the project, you have to stay holed up inside your room for the rest of your life. But in reality, he was lured into Eden, and now he's living with those girls there while he's actually unconscious. But then that means... Right. The so-called life he's leading with those girls in cyberspace is just one big lie. The whole thing is just a sad scam. Anybody who falls prey for it is unwittingly imprisoning themselves for life inside cyberspace, thinking they'll never l they've never left the real world at all. It makes sense. It also makes sense if you think about the name of the company behind it, Jorogumo. Jorogumo is a mythical spider who appears as a beautiful woman to attract men to her waterfall. They'd plunge in for her and die at her hands. Ah, I knew if there was anyone who here would know about this, it'd be you, Mai. You really know your occult history. So I get all that, but why go to the trouble of locking victims up in their room and then imprisoning them in cyberspace? If somebody's stuck inside Eden, thinking they're still in the real world and don't lock out, then... All that's left inside the locked rooms are living bodies. Which could be used for any number of things. Like... like what? According to police investigations, the victims' bodies are carried off by a third party and taken overseas to foreign countries. What? Why would anyone do that? A lot of the applicants are young and healthy. There are who knows how many people around the globe who'd want such fresh bodies. Oh, that, that's so horrible. We don't know for sure that it's anything along those lines. It's just a theory right now. Oh, this thing about it gives me real goosebumps. Anyway, about the guy your assistant met a little while ago. What do you think has happened to him? It's hard to know for certain. On one hand, his body might already be lost forever. But, on the other hand, we might still have a shot at saving him. Might as well see if we can still call out to him. But we should be prepared for the worst. Hmm, what's this? Please, you need to log out. This is another one of those, the kids' pranks. How many times do I have to tell you, buddy? I'm in the real world. I couldn't log out even if I wanted to. Must be pretty clueless to think this could possibly be inside Eden. <laughs> well, it couldn't hurt to try. I mean, there's no way it'll work. It's not how this 
works in the real world. I mean, come on. Huh? What am I... What am I seeing here? I don't get it. Nowhere to log out. Sorry to keep you waiting. Took some time to do a little prep work. That's fine. I am really looking forward to seeing your Kamishiro infiltration plan. Excuse me, but what did you need from me? Ah, Yuko Kamishiro. Sorry to have called you here out of the blue. So, we have the Cyber Sleuth's connection jump, my hacking skills, and your connections. My plan involves using all three of these in concert for the first time. Connection jump? You don't know about that. I'm explaining it to her. You see, I can jump at the TVs and other places and transport myself into the digital world. I have a half cyber body. A half cyber body? It's not even possible. I see. I think I understand now. That's why you've been able to move about so mysteriously at times. So then you have Eden Syndrome as well. No, it, it's nothing. I'm sorry for interrupting. Please, continue. I'll explain the main thrust of our strategy now. Our circuit today is a secret database on Kamishiro's Avalon server. Beyond that is a top secret area known as the Secret Room. The Secret Room? Yeah, Kamishiro's most confidential area. In other words, the location of the folder for every Kamishiro CEO, including Kishibi. Once that folder is open, you all can dive into Kamashiro's confidential database. Man, this detective agency is turning out to be scarier than any hacker team I know. I'll take that as a compliment. Yet that operation still ended with nothing to show for it. Now I get it. You got your eyes on an even deeper level. That's the plan. Using a connection jump, we can get in as far as the confidential database. First, we use our Kamashiro connections to get us invitations to the preview event at Kamashiro HQ. Rie Kishibi, the CEO of Kamashiro, mentioned it, right? It's a preview of the big update for Eden. We'll have him infiltrate the confidential database from the terminal there. Once in, send an invitation URL for the database to me, and I'll be able to get in as well. Then you'll access the secret room, correct? Yeah. Once we have the data kept there, we should be able to solve this whole thing, including figuring out Sido's true motives. For that, we're going to need to tap your connections once again, Yuko. What? The passcode that gets us into the secret room changes every day, right? The only one who knows the passcode is Kishibi. We need you to get close to her. The only one of us who can. You want me to steal the passcode from her? Well, that's the plan. Once we're in the top secret area, I'll override security so we can communicate with Kyoko. He can tell us the passcode via Kyoko. Uh... Huh? What is it? Don't tell me you've suddenly come down with a case of cold feet. No, that won't be an issue. I do have one request. Huh? My father, Satoru Kamashiro. His notes and research data should still be in the secret room. Could you also get those for me? I'm sure the truth about my father's suicide and info related to the Eden Syndrome is still in there. I see. We were certainly unable to find anything conclusive last time. If it's anywhere, it'll probably be in the secret room. Okay, I'm done with that. It won't make the mission any harder anyway. Now, we don't know if the data is even there to begin with, but... You're right. There's one other possible data storage site. Huh? The Valhalla server, which is the core for Eden's quantum processing and control. That server's got to have all the Eden's history recorded on it, dating back to the very beginning. Whoa, 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 hang on a second. The Valhalla server. Oh, sure, go right ahead and name drop like that. It's nothing. I don't, yeah. Even the most legendary of hackers couldn't hope to get close to that thing. It's got the toughest security in the world, all in one place. Oh, I'm being defeated already. 
It's not like you. What? Did you have a bad experience there? Who asked you? It doesn't matter. That server is no-go. It's not something we can just hack into. But if a Digimon program was used for the hacking, there might be a way. What did you say? Nothing. It's a gamble just infiltrating the secret room. Asking us to hit the Valhalla server is an another matter entirely. I want nothing to do with it. Hmm. If you bail on us now, we lose everything. Anyway, our target today is a secret room. That's all there is to it then. He who runs after two hairs will catch neither. That's fine with me. Okay, then let's get this mission started. Chapter 9, Our Master Plan. I'm going to leave this episode here. So, thank you everybody for tuning in. If you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, this has been Phantom Echo, signing off. Take care and stay safe, everybody, until the next episode of Digimon Story, Sabasluth.